What is going on to YouTube? Welcome back once again. We got this Gibson J40 on the old chopping block today. And uh, I'm just going to get you, get you baby, again. I'm going to bring you over here and I want to show you what I've been doing for three days. Three days and three nights. The only thing I've done is uh, re-dampened, uh, if you can call it damp, that cloth in that guitar is soaking wet. And the only thing I've done is removed all this stuff, take the cloth out and soak it more. And uh, the last time I checked, this was up to 35%. The moisture content of the wood was up to 35%. Now we got to get that up to at least 45. And with this guitar, I'd like to even see 55 to bring those cracks back together as tight as possible. Hopefully, on this big one, it'll bring it all the way back together. But I don't know, man. I don't think it will. I have some small uh, pieces of spruce. That's what this top is. You know, I might have to cut real thin pieces of that spruce and put into the crack if it don't come back together tight enough, you know, or if I can't clamp it tight enough. Anyway, so let me get you and bring you over here, show you what I've been doing. Hold on. So this is the official inspection video for this guitar. We're going to go inside, check brake braces and everything else. What I've got here. I just taped off all the holes and everything, you know, openings, so it would hold that water inside the box more, better, more better. And uh, the clamp, if you remember this crack here on the side of the fretboard extension, the crack, the crack was offset. One part of it was down lower than the other one. You know, it wasn't even with each other. All that was was just to kind of, you know, squeeze it together, pull it back together. Uh, in hopes that it'll go, you know, it'll go back together, line back up with itself, so to speak. So let's get this crap off of here and have a look and see what we've, we're going to be able to tell what the moisture content in the wood is. It takes 24 hours at least to do that. But we can tell if it's helped the cracks any at all or not so far. It's been humidifying for three days and three nights. It's had water in it and like I say last time I checked the moisture content of the wood it was 35 percent I think that's what it was and I'm sure I put all this stuff back on there again and save as much tape as possible I cut out a piece of a styrofoam plate to help seal the hole off I mean you gotta do what you gotta do right <laughs> And that's what I had to do to make the old hole wall. Alright. If I just pull this loose, the whole thing will come. We're going to check this guitar out inside and out today. See, I just had that up there. Let me read this before it changes. Ah, come on, man. Humidity, 73% according to the gauge. I have in there. See, I, that's all I did was just, you know, with the clamp, I tried to make it, and it worked. Yes, it did. It worked. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And the momentum. I'm going to keep that up there. Top number of humidity, you can see here, 73%, and 63 degrees Fahrenheit inside the box. And here's the almighty bowl of See, that, that was soaking wet. It's still pretty wet, but I mean, there was water in the bottom of the tray. You know, a lot of people misunderstand humidifying guitars. They stick uh, something like that inside of a guitar and leave it 24 or 48 hours, and they think they're good. You know, the guitar is humidified. They don't see anything wrong. To measure the content in the wood is, that's what you got to do, Okay. Like, I have to air this thing out now, and that's what we're going to do right now. When we get finished examining it, I'm going to put this thing right back down in there again, seal the hole off again, leave it 24 hours, and that, that reading, it won't be 73%, I guarantee it. It'll be, it'll tell me the moisture content in percentage that the wood has soaked up so far, <clears throat> if that makes sense. So, uh, let me get you and bring you down here, and, uh, oh, wait. I just might as well check this while I'm thinking about it. A lot of people would mention 
you know, with the neck moving because of this crack over here, I might have to do a neck reset on this guitar. Now the neck is not really perfectly straight here, but we can get in the general idea. Oh man, yeah. Check that, look at that. That's why the saddle was so low. I don't know if you can see it or not. The straight edge is hitting. You can see it moving the bridge, I'm sure you can see that. But like I said, the neck is not straight, so this is not a... I'll have to check this again with the neck straight. The neck's got a back bow in it, so if anything, it should go right over the top of that. And you can see there, it's not. My worries was if, you know, by this cracking all the way up through here, my worry was it changing the neck angle. And it looks like it may very well have did that. Anyways, let me show you how much better this crack looks now. Now, it still looks pretty bad, but it's not as far... Uh, you know, out of line with each side of it as it was. Hold on, I'll show you. You see, it's still out of line. It's not squared up yet, but that's a way I can... See there? I can bend it together. It's a way better than what it was. If you refer to the other video when the guitar arrived here, this one's a lot better too. It's still not in line, but at least I can bend them together now. It was so wide I figured it's going to have to cut a shim, like a shim, thin piece of spruce and stick in the, the whole crack to fill it. And maybe I won't have to do that. I don't think I'm going to have to do that now. But with that neck angle being off that much, I don't know, man. We may have another problem with the plane of the fretboard matching the plane of the bridge. And see, look at this. If I shave any off the bridge, you've seen me shave bridges before. Shaving back here is not going to do anything because the strings come in from the back here, okay? Then they come through these holes and up and over the saddle. So if I shaved it and if it worked, I would have to shave from this groove right here in the bridge. I would have to shave this area. That area right there is what I would have to shave all the way across here to expose more saddle. But the problem is, see where those strings come through? See it? what I'm talking about? You see where the strings come through? You're not going to lower those strings any lower than uh, those holes are. Yeah, I don't know if you can see this or not, but those holes are already about as low as the string slot is. Yeah, there, I think you can see it. So what good's it going to do to lower the saddle if the strings cannot go any lower? Wow, <laughs> we may either very well be looking at a neck reset on this guitar or another option would be, as I said before, put a Martin style bridge on it. That would allow me to shave that bridge and get it down lower. I could do that a lot cheaper too than uh, doing a neck reset. Martin style bridge, then I could shave it like we always did before. You've seen videos of me doing it before. Very same thing. That way, these strings wouldn't be limited by the height they are where they go in the back of the bridge. We'd have to drill into the guitar, and the strings would be coming up out of the guitar and over the saddle, and we could really lower it down that way and avoid doing a neck reset on it too. But like somebody said, <clears throat> that would lower the overall value of the guitar probably by putting a Martin style bridge on it and drilling holes into it. And I'm going to have to take a closer look at the bridge plate. We'll do that right now. If you do that, you know, I don't, I'm not sure if it's what this bridge plate, you know, how it's going to like that or not like it. Hold on. All right, there's the sound hole in the very bottom of your screen. And there is that crack. You can see right there where the crack had pulled the top of the guitar away from that uh, brace. Uh, I got the wrong lens on for this. Yeah, there you can see it. There's that uh, in the very left, left hand upper corner is your neck block. You can see part of the crack running right up to beside the neck block. And it runs right over that brace. It's unglued from both of those braces. But it's definitely better than it was before. 
uh, that's going to help me. I'm glad the braces didn't break because I can use those braces to force glue in there and glue, glue it back, glue the top back to the braces there where, they, where it came loose. And that's just going to be extra support. So that's a good thing. The other crack is pretty much closed up. I'm going to try to shine a light through it and see if you guys can see it. Uh, let's see where we are here. See that little bit of flashlight peeping through the crack? That right there is just past the sound hole. And I start to move the light on back. I don't see any light coming through it there now where we could see it before. So that crack is pretty much closed up. Hold on, I'm going to look at this other one in the back. Okay, the crack you see there is the one I told you that looked like the guitar had taken a hit. I don't see any light coming through it. I didn't check it for light coming through before, but I'm sure it would have. Now, to give you some perspective here, that is this back here where it looks like it took a hit. There's a crack there for sure. They are. But you can see here, uh, right there it is. It almost looks like someone tried to repair that at some point. That's the mirror. Uh... There we go. Now I'll give it time to focus. All the way back there. That's where the crack is. I really don't, I'm not seeing it here. But that's where it's at. That, like I said, is this crack right here. And I can feel that. Not like before, but I can still feel it. All right, I want to have a closer look at this area right here. Hold on. Okay, yeah, looking into the mirror, back up to the top, come on man, focus. Stupid camera, stupid, stupid camera. That may be pulled away from that uh, X-brace part there too, and it may be pulled away from those braces. I'm going to move the light in there to find out, but you can see the crack. It's alive and well. There it is. I like to go crazy. See, it may have pulled away from that brace there. It looks like, I, th I can't tell if that's a shadow that we see under that brace or if the top is actually pulled away from it. And there it goes, continues on. We'll have to cleat that, cleat that crack. I'll uh, give you some perspective here. That's this crack right here we're looking at. You can see the mirror directly underneath it. I think it only comes back to the bridge here. Uh, hold on, let's try one more thing. The only thing I'm doing now is just going to try to shine this flashlight down into the crack and let you look into the mirror. Uh, where are you at? There, okay. I think you can see a little bit of light getting in, getting through right there. Uh, just about the center of your screen. Center and bottom. And see, just like I said, when I get back to where the bridge is right here, there's no more light. And there's no more all the way down the guitar. If you look on back through there, you don't see any light getting through. This is good. You get back up here past the bridge area, and there it is. Sure enough. It's a good way to tell if a crack is just, uh, this is a crack from here. It's not really, it's in the finish back here, but maybe I can show you. I'll try to get you, I need to put a micro lens on so you can really see it. It runs right down the pick guard. Right there you can see it. It's like it stops right there. But if you come on back here, it looks like there's a crack right there in the center of the screen. See it? All the way down the guitar comes all the way down to the binding so I have to check that out closer but I, I think that's just in the, the finish because I can't feel anything man I don't feel anything at all there now, right here I can feel it and we can see light through that too so I think it stopped I think the bridge may have saved it from going any farther now according to uh, that bridge plate there is a little different from most, but uh, we could use that bridge plate with a Martin style bridge. I wasn't sure before if we'd have to go in, you know, and put more of a bridge plate in there or what. 
And that's the center of the X brace you're looking at there. But check this out. This is what's unique about these guitars. If you look right on back, you see another X back there. This is called a double X brace system. Gibson used it in these J40s. There's an X brace there and an X brace there. Two of them. And you got, you know, of course, all the little finger braces all over the place. But I thought that was unique. I wanted to show you guys that. That's pretty cool. Two X braces inside the guitar. That's what they call a double X uh, bracing system. You can look it up. Pretty cool. Should be pretty strong. And it is pretty strong because check this out. Look how flat that top is. It's not perfect, but check that out, man. Pretty dang flat. So that's uh, that's the power of double X brace system. It's just uh, you know a shame it dried out and did that. I already checked around all of the uh, binding around the body, the top, and the back and sides with a flashlight and looked inside and watched and it's all good it's all tight um, there is a bit of a crack right here I can get it to show up yeah see it comes out and down that's only in the finish that's not a problem but it comes all the way across here that tells me that that neck has at some point moved and that's why I'm worried about the angle of it the neck joint looks good you can see there well, as I say that, it looks like it's coming apart, but that's just a little separation. Uh, it's not coming apart there, and the, the rest of the joint looks good, too. But I do, I just now noticed that. I want to have a closer look at that right there, so hold on. I want to do that right now. Good way to check that, what we spotted there, that little tiny separation. Again, that's just where the neck has moved because of all the problem on top. I'm just putting pressure down on the guitar like strings would do. And quite a lot of it, I might add. And watching the crack very, very closely. It is not moving. Not one bit. It's not moving any. There's cracks in the finish in the back right here. Very, very minute ones. Which also tells me that neck has moved a tiny, ever so little bit. But you don't take very much, man. One degree is enough to throw your your uh, action and everything off. Plane of the fretboard to the plane of the bridge. One degree can make a big difference. But that's all good. I might try to get a little bit of glue in that. It's definitely moved enough to crack the finish around it. It's cracked the finish between this uh, strap button and the body where the heel comes up. That finish has got an ever so little crack right there. But it's not in the wood, so this is all very, very good. Yeah, it's cracked. The finish is cracked here too. But not, not the joint. The joint looks good. And that's what I was really concerned the most with. Yeah, good shape. Finish has cracked all the crap right here, man. There's lines running, you know, away from the guitar all the way down to the heel from the fretboard all the way down to the heel. But it's, it's all in the finish, and it's all happened because the neck has moved ever so slightly because of this crack all the way up from the hole, up the uh, fingerboard extension, clear up to the end of the body of the guitar. It's definitely moved and changed. But it's solid. I mean, I don't think it's going to move anymore. So what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to go wet this again. In fact, I'm going to go get another one of these and wet two of them to put in there. And I'll bring you back and I'll show you what we're going to do. Hold on. <laughs> All right. I got two of these now, and they are not just wet. They are dripping, soaking wet, man. Very, very wet. I'm going to put this one up here right underneath this area and the other one if it'll fit in there yeah it will and set it back in here like so all right 
Now, I'm going to try to put a clamp. I was trying to use this one right here. It's too long. Now, I've got some shorter ones than this, but I need to clamp this area right, right in here anywhere. Yeah, that's way too long, man. Yeah, I can't find my short ones, so go ahead and laugh, man. I'm going to use a heavy-duty heavy clamp. But you, whatever it takes, all right? If I feel inside of there, the crack nearest to me this way is higher. And this side of the crack is down lower. We'd like to squeeze those together just ever so little bit and even them up and get them ready for glue. Maybe you had to put a piece of leather right there and do this. Yeah, buddy. Yes, sir. I think that's going to work just right. Just want to try to squeeze, you know, put some pressure on it and leave it and hope that it lines up as the guitar humidifies. Okay, that helped a lot with that. Oh, yeah, man, I can feel it. It's almost together completely. And I want to put another clamp on the very end, right on the very end of the crack right here. We even put another one on that one too. This is the way I had it before, if you remember. You got uh, the protection rubber boots on here, so it's not going to hurt the finish or the guitar or anything like that will happen. And I want to see if I can get a get another one. On the uh, other crack right here. Oh, come on, baby. What do we got? I think it's going to work. A mighty funky looking thing, but see what that does is force that crack to line up with itself as the guitar humidifies and gets. Uh, Up to, I like to see it up to 55%. I'd like to see it all the way up to 55%. Now I gotta figure out some way to block the sound hole off with all that crap on it. Oh man. That humidification works wonders, man. You just leave that alone, leave it in there, let it do its thing. And uh, you know, you gotta block the sound hole off with something that will not absorb. The humidity that you're wanting to get into the guitar you know what I mean so if your guitar gets cracks in the top of it put some water in it put some humidification in it leave it 28 48 uh, 24 48 hours and that's cover the sound all over with something that will not absorb the moisture in there you know if I put a towel in there to stuff a towel or a piece of foam or something in the hole it's just going to suck the moisture up and, and you know the cause is going to be lost this way, none of this stuff will soak up moisture. It's got to go into the wood. And I want to get that up to 55% before I do anything to them. And when I do get it up to 55%, those cracks are going to be a lot smaller, I think. I am hoping for it. So uh, there you go, folks. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Somebody asked me the other day, why I don't center myself in the camera? Why do I always set the camera? Well, if I point the camera this way, which would center me, this thing right here, reflects light this reflects light back and you can't see as good so I cut it out and that gives me the advantage of putting uh, end screens over here is that what they're called? end screens oh man I just had a mental breakdown that's what it's called isn't it? end screen you know at the end of the video those things will pop up wow Woo! I think that's what it's called anyways it leaves me room I'm sorry baby leaves me room to put them over here without blocking out my beautiful face. Cheers. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Woo!